Hi there, and welcome to another Global Storm Outlook. And we have a Tropical Storm Douglas. Wait, it's still a Tropical Storm, right? And the thing is that this storm is... Dun 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 Jaws music, because it is heading out towards the Central Pacific, and lying out in the Central Pacific is... Hawaii. And at the time it gets towards Hawaii, it's forecast to be a 50 knot storm. And there it has to run the gauntlet. You storm? What is the gauntlet? Well, you're about to find out. The Central Pacific Gauntlet is a area of relatively marginal conditions for tropical cyclones that they often take as they come from the eastern pacific and then head in towards the big isle and it's really in this area in particular where you tend to get a lot of shear uh, which is trade winds coming in from the low levels and then upper level winds like that which tends to kind of screw with the hurricane or the tropical storm a bit and the other thing is the sea surface temperatures tend to be quite marginal we'll take a look at those in a second and the final nail in the coffin for the gauntlet is the Big Island and Haleakala themselves, which act to potentially destroy or at least reduce intensity, sometimes deflect a bit, uh, tropical storms that get close to Hawaii. But not always. Also, segue, um, the gauntlet also has very dry air and it's can be quite stable. It's particularly dry in the mid-levels. And you can see the consequences of uh, an example of interacting with that stable air is this thing in here, which is a leftover one of the previous tropical cyclone, which was, what was it? I don't remember, but it's, it's a leftover circulation and it's lost all of its deep convection and it just trundles through the Pacific like that for a little while. What we call these are R, T, W, E. Okay, it's very important. It's not an official meteorological term, but that stands for a rotating trade wind event. It's a joke term for a really shitty sort of leftover circulation from a tropical cyclone that you often see around Hawaii. It doesn't look like that R, T, W, E ever got to tropical cyclone strength. Close. It was Tropical Depression 7. Let's take a look at the sea surface temperatures for the gauntlet. As the storm comes up, it's coming through this area of water, which is, as you can see, a bit cooler than where it was before. The actual temperatures are up in the top, and if you see if it gets into the blue, it's sub below 26. 26 Celsius is about considered one of those sort of cutoffs for tropical cyclones and it's into the greens and the storm will be spending some time within this colder water which is not good news for it uh, and will probably do some damage so that gives you an idea of the f one of the aspects of the gauntlet and here are the sea surface temperature differences from normal the anomalies as you can see there is a large area that is above normal but it's not hugely above normal and not very consistent. There are areas that are below normal, and that's actually associated with the La Nina, I think, uh, developing down to the south. But the there is warmer than normal temperatures, generally speaking, along the path, and particularly over Hawaii itself. Okay, so let's take a look at the forecast. This is the European Center model, and this is these are the surface winds. I'm going to zoom it along its forecast to become a hurricane. As it approaches the Central Pacific, it'll move into the Central Pacific Basin, most likely as a tropical cyclone of some sort. It still has a very good circulation and potentially still a hurricane um, or strong tropical storm as it approaches Hawaii in this model. And it does actually come across the Northern Islands in this simulation. It is one of, of a number of simulations and a number of possibilities. It's important to bear in mind that this is way out in the forecast, so it's a hypothetical reality. 
but it's still interesting to look at because you get to see how the model is interacting with the islands. You can see the calm wakes and then the focus bits of winds between the islands and around the sides. These actually have an impact on the storm itself. And so let's see it coming forward. You see it is the Alihunihuna channel there and you can see the wake shifting in response to the tropical cyclone from the Big Island. The Big Island has two 4,000 meter high volcanoes that are extremely broad for highly disruptive effect. Comes across to the north. Now, honestly, I would be, yeah, I mean, it's obviously painting not a, a pretty serious situation in this case because it does run up through the islands, but it isn't, uh, it is a strong tropical storm in this particular forecast. To compare, let's look at the global forecasting system model and actually let's zoom in here. And this model takes it actually on a very similar track as it approaches the Big Island as a tropical storm. And I think it's going for a direct landfall. And then you can see some disruption coming in to the model and then destruction as it crosses the island. So yeah, another close close call for the Big Island, it, it looks like. Um, now, I would certainly expect significant effects from the island on this storm if it does come that close in either of these simulations. I think uh, we'll have to wait, certainly, for a number of days before we can have a more solid idea on this. And we may not know until the last moment, actually. Well, it certainly looks like a Hawaii classic, this storm. It's going to come up and take ages approaching the island for a a long period of tension and will approach and we will just have to see I think I will leave it at that and sorry I haven't been able to cover anything else I know there's stuff going on in the Gulf of Mexico uh, yeah catch you in the next one